Hello, this is Trish Triumpho Sullivan, and I'm here to talk to you today about art history, art 1A class, and we are looking at ancient Egypt today. So let's take a quick look at the major works on art history of ancient Egypt. So it's a land of contrasts. Um, it's desert and water. The Nile River basically runs straight through a desert um, and it is, the river was of, of an amazing importance economically, culturally, and religiously. Uh, provided fertile land to the ancient Egyptians. Uh, it flooded annually due to melting snow in, snow in the Lake Victoria region of Africa. And this created very uh, fertile deltas. The themes in, in art are a lot about seasons and renewal. It's very common. So the ages of the Egyptian civilization, um, there is the periods. So basically the ancient period lasted more than 3000 years and uh, from about 3100 BCE to 392 of the current era. And throughout this time, uh, Egypt demonstrated both remarkable cultural and political stability and periods of change as new kingdoms and political ages emerged. Um, art historians and Egyptologists typically focus on the old, middle, and new kingdoms. Uh, the Amarna period, the new kingdom, was also important because of its cultural reform and stylistic revolution. Egyptian art features themes of religion and rebirth, power and permanence. The early, Dionys uh, uh, early Dionystic period, which is 2050 to 2075 BCE, um, these are the, the basic ages of Egyptian civilization. The Old Kingdom, 2075 to 2120 BCE. The Middle Kingdom, 1975 to 1640 BCE. And the New Kingdom, 1539 to 1075 BCE. And finally, the Akhenaten and the Amarna period, which is 1353 to 1335 BCE. So art in eternity, let's talk about that really quick. Artistic traditions of ancient Egypt focused on representing royal figures and divinities, as well as elaborate funer funerary beliefs and traditions that reflect themes of rebirth and eternal life. Hieroglyphics were first developed around 3100 BCE and became an important part of the art and architecture. Hieroglyphics often accompanied imagery in visual art and adorned temples and sacred spaces. What, Egypt, what Egyptian art was made of, um, well, it, was, it had mostly stone resources, including granite and marble, um, that artists used in architectural projects and sculpture. Local wood species such as sycamore, fig, and acacia um, also imported woods like cedars from Syria and Lebanon were used in statuary and funeral objects. Ancient Egyptians also created objects with fancy, a ceramic-like material made of glazed ground quartz, alkaline salts, and colorants. Although fancy was created in a number of colors. Turquoise blue was common and made with copper. Ancient Egyptians also had advanced metal, uh, metal working technology and used metals in weaponry, jewelry, and art. Egyptian art and culture placed great importance on the role of color. The land of Egypt was represented politically by the white crown of Upper Egypt and the red crown of Lower Egypt. The color blue representing the Nile was associated with divinity, while the color yellow of the sun was associated with protection. Certain gods were associated with particular symbolic colors. For example, Osiris, the god of fertility and eternal life, was associated with black and green. 
Ancient Egyptians represented the natural world around them in their art. The scarab beetle and tilapia fish represented regeneration, while the lotus flower and papyrus reed represented the Nile. The scarab or dung beetle represented um, Kirpri, the sun god at dawn. Like Kirpri, pushing the sun Across the sky, according to Egyptian belief, the scarab was seen as rolling balls of dung from its burrow. The ancient Egyptians thought scarab beetles were self-generating. Scarabs thus symbolized rebirth and were important parts of funerary art. The art of ancient Egypt illustrates the active exchange of ideas, cultural influences, and traditions in the ancient Mediterranean world. The study of art and innovation in ancient Egypt establishes a foundation for better understanding later civilizations and their art. Ancient Greek, Etruscan, and Roman artists and architects were all influenced by ancient Egypt and its art and culture. Egyptian art incorporates mytho mythological and religious symbolism, often centered in the, on the cult of the sun. Representations of humans make clear distinctions between the deified pharaoh and people in lower classes using representational and stylistic cues such as hierarchical proportion and idealization versus naturalism. And basically what that means is the important figures are larger, right? So that's the kind of the, the hierarchy. Um, and idealization, making them like looking, looking uh, better more than they do than they would like naturally. Um, ancient Egyptians depicted people differently depending on their socioeconomic status. Traditional representations in art last for many centuries with remarkable stability. The only short-lived periods of experimentation and deviation, artistic and architectural style traditions. Ancient Egyptian architecture was especially influential to civilizations that followed. Development of monumental stone architecture culminated with the pyramids and with innovative designs for rock-cut tombs and pylon, uh, which is like massive sloped gateway temples, each demonstrating the importance of the pharaoh, a god king with absolute power descended directly from the sun god Ra. The palette of King Narmer. So this is uh, pre-Dionistic Egypt, about mm, 3000 to 2920 BCE, and the materials are gray whack. So the most common analysis of the palette of King Narmer hypothesizes that it depicts the unification of Lower and Upper Egypt by King Narmer whose name and likeness appears on both sides of the palette. King Narmer wears a crown that combines that of Lower and Upper Egypt. This object is an elaborate and artistic version of a common object in Egyptian life, a palette. Ancient Egyptians used palettes to prepare eye makeup. On the front of the palette, elongated necks of lions form the cavity designed to hold the, the eye makeup. The intertwined necks of these cats is often believed to be a symbolic representation of the unification of Egypt. This palette is divided into registers to divide the subject into different, different scenes and show the importance of certain components of the scene. The pharaoh is shown much larger than all the other figures and represented in composite view. This method of portraying people was meant to give the viewer the most, inf the most information possible about the subject. So this shows um, the different, uh, where, where the name is within the symbols. Um, the head of the goddess, and there are two goddesses, um, Narmar with the sandal bearer, 
there's a priest. There's the boat preceded by a swallow and open door. Um, and so this is the interpretation, right, of this. Um, that may, the down in the bottom, it may represent the king as a bull, right? Um, we talked about that in class, about the bull being a symbol of Spain. So a lot of people used animals, right? Um, and of course, the... Uh, the mythical animal there with the with the intertwined necks, right? For using the eye makeup, and then on the other side, um, we can see that the uh, the the king with the with the crown um, of Upper and Lower Egypt and a mace like uh, uh, thing in his hand. Um, and the falcon with a human arm is the god Horus. And there is an important um, foe. And the name, the, the, the an emir wearing the white crown of Upper Egypt. Um, and then below there's the, the dead foes that he's like, you know, in a wall, so that he's walking on them. All right. So this is a seated scribe. It was in Saqqara, Egypt, the old kingdom, which is the fourth dynasty, uh, 2620 to 2500 BCE. And the materials are painted limestone. Um, a lot of ancient art was painted. Uh, so that's one of the things that we don't often see anymore is that the the, the sculptures we see that we think of as being white marble or just stone were actually painted at one time so they to make them look more realistic. Um, this statue depicts a scribe in the classic pose of his profession. A scroll of papyrus rests on his lap and the figure holds a pen. The scribe's body reflects his health and wealth. Scribes in ancient Egypt had a high status. The statue has a lifelike quality achieved through the painting of the plaster and the use of inlaid eyes. So we're going to stop here because we're about halfway through the lecture. Um, and I will start and we will take this up on part two of the lecture.